episode six. I cannot believe it. I know it's now April the 1st or will be when you're seeing this uh, episode. I just want to say thank you so much for all of your comments, for liking, subscribing, uh, for all of my patrons and my Kofi supporters. And I just want to say thank you. Anyway, episode six is an exciting one. You've probably seen my little teaser where I've shown you the little bowls that I've been making. And these are the finished item and you can see that if you did see the teaser, you can see that I've actually now sliced that off. But in this programme, on the repurpose side of it, you will get to see me making this beautiful little bowl here. They're scrappy little things, they're fun and they're going to be great with the children. And you can use crunched up paper, you can use, oh, it's the wrong season for autumn leaves, but you know, you can use anything with some PVA glue. I use Mod Podge, Mod Podge and I prefer the uh, matte version, but you know, just use children's glue. So you'll see me making that bowl uh, later. For those of you who don't know who I am, I keep forgetting to do this on all my videos. My name is Susie. I am a wisdom keeper, author, hypnotherapist, and a whole range of other things. And I decided that 2023, I would streamline everything I was doing. Most of my friends and colleagues just always say, however do you get time to do everything you do? Well, I do. I just make time. I love creating and I think every day is a precious moment and I don't want to waste a minute. So the main theme of this video is a little bit about my glass art. This is a commission that I have made and you will see me making this. It went into a kiln to um, soften the glass. I don't know if you can see. I'll put it close, there you go. And then it went into a kiln to shape it into this lovely curve here. So I love making glass, although to be really honest with you, I have done with it. Um, I've been doing it for, since 2011, so 12 years or so. And as much as I love it, and I genuinely do, I am so busy doing many, many other things, and it takes a lot of energy to do glass. One of the things that I'm doing with glass today, um, and that, this is what I was doing last night, was actually creating, now I'm going to bring it to the camera, some little copper fish. And that is for another commission. So that's the sort of nonsense I get up to of an evening, chopping up little bits of copper paper and um, these will go in another project, another commission. So basically, that is what this programme is about. It's about my glass, a little bit about the repurposing, when you'll see me make that bowl. But also, I would, I'm going to drop underneath the show notes a link to my um, blog, no, newsletter is the best word for it is a newsletter and in there you will get some invitations to some of the things i do i'm an author i've written four books now and uh, published some sleep cards as well so i'm writing another one and i've got several in a file somewhere waiting for attention so i'm inviting people to come to um, a meeting on Monday the 3rd, I think it's the 3rd, yeah, Monday the 3rd of April, I don't know when you're seeing this, um, and to, to, well, for me to talk to you a little bit about what I'm going to be doing going forward with one of my books. It's called Unveiling the Magic of You. It's a truly transformational journey book. It's inclusive. It's contemporary, it's not religious, but it looks at your spiritual connection to all that's inside of you. Um, it teaches you how to 
let go of some of those things that hold you back and teaches you how to manage love, money, relationships, career, helps you to be in flow. A friend asked on one of her posts, what is abundance? And abundance to me is when you're in flow, because when you're in flow, everything comes to you in in order and you you feel at peace. There's a calmness that comes with it. And I would say that since I wrote that first book, Unveiling the Magic of You, I have found a deep sense of peace. I've suffered some health problems in the process and life has not always thrown positive stuff at me during that process. But it's not about what's happening externally to me, it's about what's happening internally that enables me to manage whatever the world throws at me. So if you're interested in making changes to your way of thinking or maybe your way of being, or if you're just seriously wanting to live a life of abundance in flow and manage any difficult situation, then join me. But failing that, go to Patreon, have a look at the Wisdom Keeper layer, tier, sorry, correct word is tier, and it tells you a little more about it. So underneath, you're going to find all the links, and I really encourage you to do that. I also encourage you to subscribe, to like, to share. You know, this is a lifestyle program and it might not all be of interest, but it's sometimes good to live vicariously through our friends and colleagues. And certainly for me, uh, YouTube podcasts have become my Netflix, really, because it's real people doing real stuff beautifully. And, you know, yes, it's easy to put together videos and some are better quality than others. But what matters is that real people are teaching me and showing me and guiding me and entertaining me. So join us in this YouTube world and have some fun. And there is always an opportunity for you to be part of the tribe that um, I'm part of. There's an opportunity for you to come to the Circle of Light. It's all free. And there you will find people of like mind. It's a gentle space of healing and wholeness. Uh, you can, if you're interested, become an author in the Pocketbook series that I'm writing and with other colleagues. And I'm encouraging new authors to write small pamphlet size uh, books around about 100 pages. I've got two, one called I Am and one called Renew. They're only £4.50, round about $5.13 or something, I think, in US. I'm not sure about the rest of the world. Uh, so they're cheap little books that you can keep in your pocket. And I'm really excited that I'm going to be able to introduce you to two of the authors of the next two books that will be published hopefully this month. And there are many more authors that are planning books to join the Pocketbook series. So there are opportunities for you to come on the sofa chat if you've got something of interest you want to share. And also, if you are an author and you want to promote your book, um, let me know and we will get together on the book club. So that is a little introduction. As you can see, the glorious sun is just turned me into Roy Orbison or somebody. <laughs> okay, thank you. Enjoy the video and take good care of yourself. And there'll be, as always, a little meditation at the end of it. So stay right to the end. Get your knitting, get your drawing if that's what you're doing, or just sit and enjoy yourself for a, a, an hour or so, however long the video ends up being. Okay, take care, thank you. Don't forget, like, subscribe, share and comment if you feel able to, thank you. So here I am in my studio. 
And I've been practicing making some bowls. So I've got a, a normal glass bowl out of my kitchen and I've covered it in fabric. I've had a friend over and we've had a lovely weekend playing, making these bowls. They're very tough, a little bit sharp. I need to work on what to do with those. And essentially, this was a dress that I absolutely loved, uh, but it had gone a bit grey and tatty and ah, just not no, not worth wearing now, really. But I love moth flowers on the dress, so I thought, make good use of them. So it's an experimentation. It was inspired by something on Pinterest that I saw. And it was a, a group of ladies actually uh, felting onto balloons to create bags. And I thought, I'm not really fond of buying balloons, I'll be honest, but I could make some little bowls out of that lovely fabric. I had intended to do some um, embroidery on the, on the flowers, but never actually got round to it. So I thought I would just show you how to make these because I thought they'd be really good for Easter, for the, for the children to make. So find something, probably not glass if you're working with children, but find something that you can cover with some cling wrap, uh, cling film, um, just so that you're protecting the, the bowl. And literally all you do is just literally just cover that over. I only want to make shallow bowls, so you can see I did not go the full width of it. There we are, it's on top. So they are there. So what do I do? The first thing I do is get some fabric, and these are just scraps of fabric that I've got, and I've started to chop them up. And I don't think it matters massively, but because I wanted the inside of the bowl to be as interesting as the out, I made sure that the the bit, oh dear, how can I describe this best? The right side is facing down. So all I have is some matte Mod Podge that I'm going to paint on top of the um, bowl or the cling wrap. and then start layering some fabric on top of it. So stretching it and pulling it, it's quite a messy uh, game. So I know most children like that sort of messiness that goes with it. And it doesn't have to be an exact science. One thing that I really liked about this fabric was that it had got a strip. So I suppose, strictly speaking, I should have ironed this first, but I didn't. Um, so I'm just going to whip the end off it. So you could use children's clothes that are no longer fit for uh, sending to the charity shop or handing down. Um, and certainly over the years, I've made all sorts of uh, items with old clothing and it's a really really good way oh that's perfect look at that it's excellent um, it's a really good way of repurposing recycling your clothing uh, and making it into something new and one of my rugs is actually t-shirts from the girls um, that they grew out of and you know children like to make a mess don't they I'm going to do something interesting here, and that is I'm not going to glue the very edge of it because when it's dry, um, I'm going to tuck that end over so that it isn't such a sharp um, edge. Beauty of PVA glue, you can use children's glue, um, but the beauty of it is that it's very forgiving and you can really mould it very well. Yeah, so yes, for, for the children's t-shirts, I actually either crocheted, I can't remember, or knitted a rug 
out of their shirt, t-shirts and, and little dresses. And, and it's, it just lives in the kitchen, goes in and out of the washing machine as needed. Uh, but it's nice because you can remember um, the clothes that they wore when they were little. So, you know, there's memory quilts that you can create. Um, this material is Asian and uh, I bought it to make an outfit, but I found it too flimsy. I didn't like the fabric as I was, um, as I was sewing it. So it ended up in the, in the scrap box. Um, can you see how really simple this is? And it doesn't matter. I mean, if you actually look at those bowls I showed you and you look closely, it, they're an absolute mismatch of materials. But the impact is quite good. So you could put chickens in there or some chocolate eggs or something. Um, and the children would just enjoy making things. Um, I'm a big Pinterest girl. I do like Pinterest and very often send my little nephew, well, my brother-in-law, um, some things from Pinterest that he can do with him, like little flying things. So if you're short of creative inspiration, I highly recommend that you go on to Pinterest and have a little play. Um, because children just are creative by nature and it's only us that, that restrict them by telling them they're not doing it right or um, it's not good enough. I, I remember my sewing teacher was, I don't know why I ever sewed again after her, <laughs> the experience of her quite honestly. Um, she was how to put children off sewing I think would have been her middle name anyway I hope that this um, this idea inspires you really I think that's the best thing just going to tie that down so what do we do now obviously one layer of fabric and it's a very flimsy fabric is not going to be sufficient so what you need to do, and if you look there, you can see how the intern and the last bit of the bowl will be fantastic. And I've created this edge uh, that will wrap over and soften the edges so they're not so sharp. And that's quite useful for children. So it's got a good layer of glue on it. And then I've got all loads of bits here. And I literally am just going to chop little bits up and start layering the um, layering some more fabrics on top of the wet glue. Um, my friend taught me that actually when they were doing theirs as our experiment. Um, they didn't glue every layer, and I did. So mine is um, took a lot longer to dry, and. Um, I think her idea was far better than mine. So I'm going to put a little bit on there. That's uh, just to knock that down and get it glued on. I'm going to carry on doing this. I hope this has inspired you um, and recommend that you don't steal somebody's clothes that they actually want to wear <laughs> just because it's beautiful fabric. Um, use this to um, use up some old stuff and make use of it again. Um, so, and I suppose, I don't know whether you could do this if you haven't got any any fabrics, whether you could actually go to a, a charity shop and ask them if they've got any rags um, that they can't sell because I know they tend to sell those in black bags for about 50 pence. 
and they go to um, places that make floor rags and stuff like that. So anyway, one little project for Easter. So I will carry on and I'll come straight back when I've finished. And bear in mind that these can take several days to dry. It is dry, this was finished yesterday, um, but to fully cure, and it still has got some bend in it, to fully cure several days, but perfectly fine for Easter eggs and stuff like that. Okay, see you later. So here I am at the final stages of this little bowl, and I'm back where we started. I've really smoothed this down with my hand, and I've really done everything I can to create a really nice soft bowl. That's going to sit now on the window ledge. Really like it. Looks beautiful inside as well. It's going to sit on the wind window ledge. Hopefully the cat doesn't knock it off and um, it will dry overnight. And then what I'll do is just take the um, cling film off the bowl so I can pull it off altogether. So I'll release it like this. And as you can see, as I lift, it lifts it. I don't want it to go really hard before I take it off the bowl. So I'll probably do that a little later on, but not yet because I want it to hold its shape and um, giving it the best opportunity I can to do that. So, We'll see what it looks like. See you later. Thank you. Hello, and you found me in my glass studio. Yes, it's the same space that I do everything in. Uh, we don't have a dedicated area to work. So I use my office for just about everything. So here I am um, starting to make some fused glass objects for a commission. I mostly now work to commission. It's always been a hobby. It was a stress relief for me from my very busy life. And um, I don't get it out very often these days as I'm pretty busy writing and doing other things. But I thought you might like to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to turn the camera off and then I'm going to make sure that you can see uh, from an aerial view of what I'm actually playing with. I won't show you everything because it's quite lengthy and tedious uh, and also I will try and chat to you while I'm doing it. Okay, so we here we have a chopping board, a large piece of glass which is called a float glass. I use Tecta uh, which is three millimetres thick. I've got a, a straight edge and a cutter. Okay, so this is a diamond cutter and it has oil inside it so that it glides easily and will cut in one. I used to be a really good cutter. Do you know, I'm absolutely rubbish now. Uh, and this is one of the reasons that I'm giving up this art is because I'm no longer good at the cutting and that is one of the primary jobs. So, so all I'm doing now is just gently tapping because otherwise I'll lose the whole piece of glass. So now the piece of glass is the right width for my project, which is a, a curve. And this is a template that I have. Um, and the guy that I um, work with, Alwyn, he will create a beautiful wooden base for this. I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing. Okay. 
So because I like to pretty much create fairly standard pieces for him, uh, because he creates the wood bases and he has a jig nowadays, um, this is going to be a wave of glass um, for a wave, literally. <laughs> And so I believe that the client wants it to have more of a curve like this. So although that is my template, I'm adding a little extra to the process. I'm a little bit concerned about this um, because that could easily fracture the glass. So I'm just going to soften that and hopefully that will be fine. Uh, the commission is for two pieces. Uh, the same. Now, in my opinion, with art, it's not handmade art if every piece is the same. So you can see me now. I'm just literally allowing the blade to do its thing. I'm not necessarily following my line, uh, but I am basically following it, which gives me hope that I, when I turn it back over and I press again these gentle taps, not overwhelming the glass. It should start on the journey of separating without major damage. Let's see if we're there yet. <laughs> goes. So here we have the first wave. I hope you can see that. This now needs grinding so that these rough edges are not there and also I like to take just the edge off of the corners. If you look closely you can see that the tapping has left some pretty sharp looking edges. So I'm going to put that safely on one side. Okay, so both pieces are now washed and ground so that they're safe to touch and they have no sticky fingers on them. Here we have some glue that is called glass tack and this is going to ensure that the glass that I'm going to layer on here uh, will just hold sufficiently. This burns away in the kiln so you don't really see this. Um, I sometimes, oh, I don't always use it, but for this particular one, because it is really heavy on, on glass, this particular one, I've also got some broken glass. Now, some of this is from uh, previous projects that I've used uh, and created that I didn't like, but they're very useful. The official form for this is called Frit. Um, I know I can handle glass. <laughs> yes, it used to terrify me as a child. I've no idea why, but it did. I do have cuts and of course I do, you know, it's inevitable. So what I'm just going to do is literally just throw some of this on here and play with it for a while. See what I like, take bits off that I don't, because this is the C. So it's, you know, I want it to be, these are too big, so I'm shoving those back in there. Uh, the C is not um, a simple colour, is it? It's multiple colours. And of course, it's a wave. So we've got, um, we've got some white to go on here as well. If when I've done this, I'm not happy that I've got enough uh, colours going on or the right thickness, um, then I will go in, back into the garage and chop some glass up with my hammer, um, which I remember my tutor absolutely despised me and my love of Frit. And she begged me to use whole sheets of glass. Um, I never learned how to use whole sheets of glass, to be honest, very well. It's quite clearly this is my style. Um, and, you know, most of my customers, well, 
they obviously like it. Otherwise, this stuff wouldn't be out in the world, would it? Um, I'm on a kiln shelf. So this is a kiln shelf. This is kiln, it's called thin fire paper, and it stops the glass adhering to the shelf. Um, I used to put some kiln wash on the shelf, but I don't know. The last few times I've done it, I did a really bad job. So as you can see, I think I've sort of run out of steam some 13 years later. Um, a, a really dear friend of, of ours, um, she introduced me to this. She'd been on a workshop um, and wanted to go and do another shop workshop with this lovely lady named Anne Gell. And, um, and she absolutely inspired me. Um, and it felt like, yes, this is the, this is the artistic craft, because as you know, with knitting, uh, I never really saw it as anything, but, um, uh, uh, utility, I suppose, is the best way. These are lovely little blobs that I create in the kiln and they add a real nice reflection. Now, bearing in mind, I've got several of the two of these to make. Um, I'm not going to put lots on. Um, what I've clean forgotten to do is to actually leave a gap for Alwyn to put his wood in. So let me just push everything up um, a little. He needs a lip. There. So if ever you get the opportunity to go and explore the world of glass, do it. It's great, great fun. So what I'm looking for now off camera are my different coloured fruits that I have or maybe haven't got anymore. This is this is a deep royal purple frit and this is one that I use a lot. I've had it well, for about 10 years, I suppose. And I use it for most of my pieces. I just throw bits of frit into my glass like this. This is this is uh, medium. Uh, I have fine as well. And I don't know why that purple frit is very dark. Um, and it just is, is a marvellous addition. Here I've got some crushed tecta. You know those pieces that I was, um, I broke. I don't know if I showed you that bit, but one of the pieces broke. So I'm adding this to the, the sea foam, I suppose we call it, alongside these lovely little uh, dots that I make, which are magnificent. There. You can buy frit, but why when you've got the joy of making a lot of noise in the garage, <laughs> smashing things up? Um, I don't know. I do buy the fine, obviously, because uh, I don't have the facilities to make that. And um, there we go. That looks right. I really like the look. Uh, warm white, coarse glass oh that's nice well i'll be able to get some of this in these two commissions which i think will probably finish this um, packet off uh, these this was for robins <laughs> this is for robins to sit on at christmas so i think that's probably about half of it um i don't really want to buy any more um, glass. I'm leaving that for the second one. Got a little bit of medium opal, so I can put a little bit of that on. That will do, actually. I think that will be more than adequate for this. So I don't know what you're making of this process, but um, it's brought me huge amounts of joy. 
Uh, it is not uh, not the cheapest hobby in the world by any means. Um, it it definitely costs a lot of money to set up a studio, and however, it is such a beautiful uh, medium to work with, and I've created a multi. I can't tell you how many hundreds of things I've created uh, in my studio over the years. So there we are. This now goes, obviously I'm going to tidy it up and it goes into a kiln and there are different settings on the kiln and I won't bore you with that detail but basically um, you, this is called a tack fuse. Um, I'm going to put a little purple dot in, a turquoise dot in there. Um, this is called a tack fuse and it should look uh, fairly spectacular when it comes out of the, uh, of the kiln. And it should still have some definition and be a superb little piece. So what I'm going to do is tidy this up. And then I'm going to put it in, pop it in the kiln and um, and then make the next one so that when this comes out tomorrow, um, I will be able to pop the other one in and then uh, I'll put it on. I don't think I've got it with me. Hold on a moment. So, so this will go in the kiln and then I'm going to, when it's out of the kiln, I will then place it, oh, the other way around, on here, put it back in the kiln on a completely different setting and then it will shape it so that the, um, it becomes a wave. You can see the side there. Well, I hope you found that of interest. Um, if by the time I finish the videos, you uh, they're ready, I will show you before I publish. Failing that, I will post on social media and also in the uh, next video that I edit. Hopefully you will enjoy what you see. Any questions, fire away. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye. And as you sit just quietly breathing, you can just enjoy watching the images of some of the glass that I've created, or maybe staring out of the window, or maybe focusing on some precious memory that you have an icon for in your home. When we take just a few moments to focus our minds, our eyes and our thoughts on other things, we set ourselves free just for that moment. just allowing that breath to carry you ever forward into life, into hope and into love. Thank you.